Hey there, welcome back to High Infidelity, the best channel for cheating stories. Like and subscribe to channel for more spicy stories. Now, let's get into today's story video. Crazy day, but the divorce is final. My ex-wife and her father, and I hammered out a settlement agreement in mediation last week. It took all day, but we finished. Basically, it's over because we all agreed. Only one side is required to prove it to the court. That day, I was gracious and let the children remain with her since she had relatives visiting from out of town. We swapped days, attempting to offer an olive branch. For some reason, I feel she has messaged me every day since then. I disregarded the most of it since it had nothing to do with the kids. My mother fell and shattered her hip and leg on Thursday night. My poor mother is also a saint. She has devoted her life to her family, particularly my mentally challenged elder sister. Friday was prove it day and I was thinking about more than just the divorce. It moves rapidly with simply me and my lawyer present. Remember that we have already agreed on everything, so this is just basic information for the courts to accept what everyone has signed and agreed on. I received my gals since today is my return day from last week's swap. My ex-wife messaged me about something, and I responded sarcastically, congratulations on obtaining the divorce you wanted. She cheated on me, she responded with a message saying she hasn't seen any documentation yet, so wait off. I informed her that I had gone before the court today, and that we would be divorced on June 11, 2021. Her communication halts. I'm not sure why, but I assume she'd be pleased, because this was what she wanted. I'm about to start cooking supper with my middle kid when I receive a call from my ex-father-in-law, who asked me to come out and chat to him. We haven't communicated in weeks. I see him at my children's sports, and when I pick up and drop off my children, but we never talk. He's simply staring at me. I simply think he's been duped and will accept anything his daughter says him. Because this isn't typical, I took out my old phone and activated the recorder. I stepped out, and he's sitting in his pickup in my driveway. I went around to the driver's side, and he didn't get out. Instead, he had his window pulled down. He asked how you were going to go before the judge without her. I told David that this wasn't about him. He was there under my protest last week as well. I didn't marry you, and I'm not divorcing you, therefore, I'm not having this talk with you. At this time, I should have gone inside. If she wants to chat, I'll talk with her, but I'll remain out of this. He said that you will inform me. I poked my finger at him to emphasize my point, and he swatted at me and yelled, Don't point at me. I informed him his daughter is an unfaithful woman who has been sleeping with a married guy since it's my home, and I'll point anywhere I want. I realize this is a stupid argument. He referred to me as a liar. I said that she had slept with more than one married guy and wrecked households. He pretended to be astonished at first, then inquired as to how I would know. I said that I had seen the invoices and paperwork. In addition, I spoke with the cheater's ex-wife. He reaches a point when he is unconcerned about the cheating. I wasted all of the money, he claims. She recently received thousands of dollars, and if he had to live with me, he would have cheated as well. He claimed to know everything. I said, I suppose not if you're unaware of her having relationships with married guys. His other two daughters have followed suit. I inquired as to how it felt to raise three adulteresses. That his facilitation is a contributing factor to the issue. What would his father think? His father was a very pious guy, he raised his beep. Well, I was very angry, but maybe I crossed a boundary. He reaches out and punches me in the arm. I protect myself and retaliate. I order him to come to a halt. I don't want to go to war with this old guy. He begins ranting at the judge once more. I explain the procedure, but he is still upset, claiming that their attorney failed to inform them. Not my fault. He begins to accuse me of being insane and that my son, his grandson, will be exactly like me. I told him he'd be a nice guy and that I hope he didn't marry a beep. He retracts his statement and insists that this isn't the end of the story. He revs his motor, and I'm afraid he's going to run over me. I take a step closer to our sturdy in-ground basketball goal. I'm not sure how long this will last, but it's all I've got till he eventually departs. I phoned the police who took a report, but I chose not to prosecute charges at this time. I have two years to do something about it. The cops went to my ex's house and talked with her and her sister, who is also insane. She could be her own post. Dot her father was not at home at the time. While I was speaking with the cops, my sister arrived to my residence. My daughters are waiting for me now that I've returned inside. I had to fill them in on a few details since I think one of them saw the cops. 
they decided to go to bed since it was almost 10 o'clock. It was a somewhat depressing way to conclude the day. I hugged them and assured them I loved them and would keep them safe. I'm not sure what this is not over actually means, but I'm guessing he, ex-father-in-law, has something in the works. Nobody knows what he's thinking. I hope all of this nonsense made sense. I'll keep hope that things will improve from here. The fundamentals have been updated. Thursday night, my mother collapsed and shattered her left leg and hip. She had surgery on Friday morning. While she was in surgery, I went before the court to show my mediation in order to finalize my divorce. There is one more piece of paperwork that needs to be turned in. My ex and I were talking about the home Friday afternoon, since we were selling it, and I made a snide remark about being divorced, and she pretended she didn't know anything. That day, she dismissed her attorney and left a message with Ma. Her father was at my home creating havoc within five minutes of the call, and the police were called. I drove my middle kid to her basketball competition on Saturday. My ex texted me to say she was coming to pick up a few personal items from the home. She still had clothing here, so I assumed she was taking them, and it's my fault for assuming instead of asking. While I was at my daughter's basketball game, I received a call that my mother had had a stroke and was being airlifted to a larger hospital that could assist her. When I returned home, I saw that the house had been gutted. She drank a much. Everything remains in the home and until it is sold, according to the terms of the deal. She may be upset since she told her AP in November that she was receiving everything she wanted, including the home and children. She did not get the home, and my kid now lives with me. I also see my daughters virtually every day. I don't believe she read or seemingly didn't grasp what we committed to the week before, or maybe she doesn't care, like our marriage. I was so concerned about my mother that I didn't care what was going on in the home and ran away to be with her. My mother was in the intensive care unit till today. She is improving, but she still has a long way to go. My ex ex did contact on Monday to inquire about my mother. Or maybe she was fishing if I'm going after her dad for assault. She attempted to explain that her dad was with her when she found out the divorce was complete, and she was disappointed she didn't get to appear before the court as well. She assured me that I would do the same for my daughters. She also stated that she didn't know why she left, and that he didn't come to my home until it was finished. She said that she dismissed her attorney because she wanted revisions to our mediation deal. This agreement is stated at least three times. My mediator and my lawyer both told me the same thing. She left a note for my attorney that she needed 30 days to consider her choices, but she isn't in a rush since I'm dealing with my mother. I texted my attorney, telling her I don't trust her, and requesting that she complete the remaining piece of paperwork. We'll see what happens since she did it yesterday. My attorney and my brother, who is also an attorney, both said that my ex is powerless to intervene. That's the end of it. I'm not sure what the fuss is about considering she desired the divorce and has an AP. Let's put a stop to this and let me leave. I went home yesterday night and was attempting to find out what had been stolen. We were meant to divide certain things, and you can imagine how that worked out for me since I wasn't here. One thing that puzzles me is why they stole all the Bibles. We had quite a few of them. She clearly doesn't care about what's stated in the Bible, so why take them? I'm sure she rationalized her acts, but it doesn't make them acceptable to God. I sometimes want to contact her and ask slash tell her some of these things, but I know I'm wasting my time. I think she is with AP this week, and now that we are split, I must let it go. When I think of them together, I feel a little shaky. I did it tonight, and my middle kid noticed it and became really concerned about me. It's not a good sign. I hope I never meet him because I'm not sure I'll be able to stop myself from pursuing him. I know it's her, but I may have to leave if he shows there at some time. I'm going to start IC again shortly, and I know I'm going to need it. Anyway, thank you for your prayers for my mother. Many of you, I'm sure, are going through difficult times with your spouse or ex. I wish you the greatest of luck and tranquility.